John Key in his statement talked about the opportunity and showed what this government is doing in its priorities for 2011. Just last week, the Prime Minister announced the date of the general election, 10 months ahead of the date, 26th of November. And what is pretty clear from those who have been watching or listening to the debate today, there is a clear divide between those over there and those of us on this side. And I think it's also been fair to say that you've probably heard uh, the, gloveses. the gloves have been off. If you look at the national side in the blue corner, a clear focus on spending less and borrowing less. A focus on building the foundations for a stronger economy and for building better results from public services. From the red corner, however, Labour is focused on spending more and more and more and more. And borrowing and creating debt, not just for our generation, but for the next generation and the one after that. Idly promising to spend another five billion already, and I'm sure that that amount will go up as the months uh, creep towards the election. But actually they haven't told us how they're going to pay for that extra spending. And we've heard even just the last speaker criticise the government's tax switch. Oh, but no, they're not promising to reverse the tax cuts. They're not promising to reverse the tax cuts or to reduce GST. That's what I'm looking forward to hearing from that side of the House. If you hate the tax switch, make a promise to reverse it. But tonight, I want to look at the priorities that this government has laid out today through the eyes of my constituents. Whether a chef in Cambridge, a plumber in Patararu, a labourer at Kinleith, or perhaps someone who owns a shop in Taupo. Because those are the people that I'm listening to every day. Those are the hard-working New Zealanders who, although they may be doing it tough today because of a global economic recession that we've been in, they know, they hope for, and they aspire to a better tomorrow. So let's have a look at that small business owner, because there's a large number of those in my electorate, and I'm sure is for many of us. The constituents we deal with every day. But do you know what they're telling me? Do you know what they're actually saying? They know if they're in business, they have to do better business. They have to work smarter. They have to be more efficient. They have to look at ways that they can streamline and improve the performance of their business. And earlier today, Mr Speaker, we heard Prime Minister John Key talk about the fact that government needs to be looking at reforms that will streamline and improve the performance of the government bureaucracy. It's actually not rocket science. Small businesses are doing it. So why would we expect that government wouldn't? John Key says that by international standards, New Zealand's public service is bloated and inefficient. We need to be lean, to be quick and to be nimble. And we actually do believe that it is possible to have a public sector like that. Small businesses, medium-sized businesses, large businesses up and down this country have been forced to do that in the economic recession that this country has faced. And the government sector is no different. We're not going to let it grow at a rate that it did under the Labor government of nine years. We actually need to make sure that we have a high-performing public sector. And it's interesting, because when I talk to people in Taupo, they're quite clear about what they expect the government to provide. They expect a world-class health service, not a third world one. They expect an education service that provides for every single New Zealand child, not four out of five. And they expect a strong and effective justice system and social services that protect the most vulnerable. Just last night, I was in Hamilton at a launch of the Regional Partners Initiative, which is TechNZ's regional technology partner working with Waikato Innovation Park. And the whole conversation was about supporting businesses to grow through using research and development. 
The presentation covered things like our technology transfer vouchers for small companies and the technology development grants, which give more R&D investment to research-intensive industries. We all know that Kiwis are great at inventing things, but we're actually not as great as turning those ideas into opportunities that raise money for companies, but more importantly, export dollars for our country. By growing businesses, that's how we create jobs, and that's how we're able to increase our wages. And we know that this is what improves the lifestyle of hard-working New Zealanders. But what I want to do is focus now on education. Because we know, on this side of the House, that improving education and skills is critical to lifting New Zealand's standard of living for every single New Zealander. As a mother of three young children, I want my children to be well prepared and to be able to take the most of every opportunity that is in front of them. I believe that every New Zealand child should have the opportunities in life that come from a great education. So I want to start very deliberately with the early childhood sector and set the record straight. National is spending $1.4 billion this year. That is the largest amount of money ever spent in early childhood education. So when that side of the House tell you we are cutting it, it's absolute rot. $1.4 billion. That's right, look up. Because that is three times as much as what you guys were spending five years ago. So let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. We've tripled the spending, so, so you'd kind of think that perhaps we'd be getting a bit more for what we're spending. But actually, the number participating hasn't even increased by 1%. And on this side of the House that we believe that young children should be able to access early childhood education regardless of race or income. And that's why our priority is to lift participation, because in some areas there are 40% of five-year-olds starting school having had no early childhood education whatsoever. And I've talked, Mr Speaker, to teachers in schools who have faced those five-year-olds, and it is incredibly difficult for those five-year-olds because they are already behind. So we need to target Māori, Pacifica and children from low-income backgrounds, and that's exactly what we're doing with our investment of $91.8 million into these targeted spaces, providing 3,500 extra spaces. So I also want to touch on national standards, because it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be a good day in the House if I uh, stood here and didn't mention national standards, because, Mr Speaker, I think they are absolutely stunning. Because under Labor, under nine years, we had a result where four out of five children left school without sufficient skills in reading, writing and maths. So if we think about the number of children who started school last week, 60,000 kids started school last week, five-year-olds. 12,000 of them would spend 10 years at school and not be able to read, write or do maths. And Actually, I say that that's just an absolute disgrace. So if you're a parent and you've had a report home, you would have found it a damn sight easier to understand, and actually your children can understand them as well, which I think is a really important part of the learning journey. You, your child and your teacher all working together to improve your child's outcomes at school. So with National, Mr Speaker, it's pretty clear. You get a government committed to building a better future, responsible economic managers, creating the conditions for growth, which leads to better lifestyles for every single one of us.